here again for another VB.NET 2013 GUI tutorial. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the button, the good old button. It's done us well over the years, and it's time to actually figure out how to use the guy. So we're going to look at its purpose, the properties, the functions of the button, and then the different events. And I would like to start trying to introduce some tricks that we can use with these different controls, but unfortunately, I couldn't really think of any for the button. So if you have any recommendations or things you'd like to see, please put it in the comments and I'll try and follow this video up with a reply. But anyway, let's get into it. So, good old button, we find him up here in the toolbox. Let's drag him in and give him a bit of size so we can see him nice and easy. There's your button. So, what is the purpose of a button? Well, really, it's to trigger some code when it's clicked. So, when I say clicked, I don't mean it has to be a mouse button. It can be the left uh, button of the mouse, but it can also be the spacebar on the keyboard or the enter key, or even more if you've got shortcuts for that button, which I explained earlier on. But essentially, that's all the button is. You click on it and it does something. So it allows the user to trigger some code when they're ready. So that button might be used to, I don't know, log you on when they've just typed in their username and password. It could be something like a calculator where you press a button to add all these different numbers up. So it's just code underneath a click, basically. And just to start it off, let's have a quick look at the properties for a button. And I'm going to have a look at some pretty generic properties in this video, there because there's not that many properties that are really specific to buttons. So what I'm going to do is just quickly explain some properties that you're going to use in pretty much every single control you have. So to start with, obviously, we've got the name. And let's say, for instance, we need the three letters at the front to signify what it is. It's a button, so BTN. For button, and what is it? I'm going to call it button click because I've got no special name for it today. And let's continue on. The second property I want to look at is enabled, which is quite interesting. When a control is enabled, the users are allowed to interact with it. Okay, so I can click the button. Nothing happens, but I can click it at the very least. If I change enabled to false, then I'm unable to click the button, and you can see it's grayed out there. So the, even the appearance changes when you change the enabled value. And that can be very, very handy if there's properties or something you don't want users to interact with until they meet a certain condition. So it might be you don't want them to be able to click the login button if there's no username or no password provided. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's have a look at the next property, flat style, which is quite interesting. It changes the physical appearance. So by standard, flat appearance, whoop, flat style I should say, sorry, uh, matches the style that Windows has. So if they've got a custom theme on their Windows, it's going to match that theme. But we can change it to different styles. And probably the most interesting I find, you've got system and pop-up and flat. So system is a little bit flatter. Okay, I don't particularly like it. There's pop-up, which looks a bit weird. If you've ever used really old versions of Windows, you might know what that looks like. It's like a 3D flat button. It, I think it looks disgusting, but anyway. The other one, which is quite nice, is flat. It can look good. It can look terrible as well, but I think it looks much nicer than the pop-up of the system. Anyway, along with that, when you select the flat style, you also have this flat appearance property to be able to change now. And, okay, and it comes with four different properties. The border color, okay, which is obviously the border around the button. So we could change that to a nice bright red. It looks quite disgusting. We've got the border size. We could set to 5 and make it nice and thick. And then you've got mouse down and mouse over back color, which are quite interesting. So let's change these to two different ones. Let's go fuchsia and then blue. All right, let's have a look at my red fuchsia blue button. Probably look absolutely terrible. Wow, that looks so crap. Anyway, that aside, that's what the flat style does. And personally, I'm a big fan of just the standard Okay, just leaving it default and not changing any of those properties. Anyway, moving along, the next generic property we're going to have a look at is text. Okay, you'll probably find text on every single control in the entire suite. So text is generally controlled for something it's displaying. So for the form, it's what appears at the top. For a button, it's what appears on the button. So I could change it to click me, press enter, and I get a nice update. Now, if you want to change the size or the style of this, you're looking at the font property, which I'm actually going to delve into for the next video. So right now, I'm leaving it as that. And the final generic property I'm going to look at is visible. Okay, so literally what it is, if it is visible, it's there. If it's true, if I set that to false, it means it's hidden, and I press play, 
Oh my god, I have no button. So that can be quite helpful if you want to hide different controls at points. But that's pretty much it for the properties. So what I really want to look at now is the functions. And again, the button doesn't have any pretty special or amazing functions it can do. So I'm just going to look at some pretty basic functions today for Mr. Button. So I called him BTN click. So I'll type that in and press dot. Now, please take note, the little blue symbol signifies a control on your form. The purple one is the event, which is this, or sorry, a function, which is this guy right here at the top. All right, let's stay with the blue one. Now, there's four functions I want to show you. The first one is bring to front. All right, now you can see the description, brings the control to the front of the Z order. So what that actually is, is there needs to be some way for Visual Basic to know if there's two controls overlapping each other, which one appears on the front and which one appears in the back. So for instance, if I draw another button on my form, okay, and I send him to the back, if I right click and go send to back, I can't see him, he's almost invisible. But this bring to front will bring the button to the front. So let me quickly change this to the other button, which will be button two, because I'm, oh no, button one, sorry. All right, and then when I click this, it's going to bring it to the top of the Z order, and then I can see the button again. Now, you're probably not going to use it in that manner, but that's pretty much it. You could also do send to back, which is the complete opposite. It sends it to the back of the Z order, and so things you know, can overlap it again. Anyway, moving along from that one, let's have a look at the next function. The next one I like to look at is focus, and this is actually really, really important. Okay, sets input focus to the control. Now, if you don't know what focus actually is, Okay, I'm just going to press space and leave it there. Focus is whatever control we, the user is currently interacting with. So if you've used Windows before, you know that you can only interact with one program at a time and generally only one control at a time. So that pretty much means if you click on a text box and your cursor is sitting in that text box ready to go, such as what I've got right now, the current control that has focus is the text box. There are no other controls which will have the focus of the user, which is quite interesting. So, if I, you can see this button's already got focus, so it's not actually gonna make sense for me to click it and focus it. The fact that it's highlighted blue tells me that it is focused. So I'm gonna utilize my second button and actually demonstrate this with a little bit of meaning. Let's change this to button one again. Let's have a look at it. So you'll see this button is focused. I click this and all of a sudden the focus jumps over to the other button. So it's really good to learn about different focuses because you might have to use it at certain points. All right, next one that I want to show you was actually one that we used last time for the forms, hide. Okay, and essentially hide is just a way of setting the property visible to false. So if I click it, bye bye button, can't click on it, it's gone. All right, and then we've got the opposite of that, we have show. All right, this isn't really going to work because the button's already shown. But yeah, it makes it visible, if it's invisible. But anyway, that's just the four different functions I wanted to show you. That, as I said, they're not entirely interesting, but they might be useful at some point down the road. All right, so as for events, there are four events that I want to have a look at. And the first one is staring us in the face. It is click. All right, so I'm going to put a quick message box like I always do. There we go. So this is a quick message box, and when I click the button, it'll say, hello. So that event is when I actually just single click on the button. And interestingly enough, this button currently has focus. If I press the space bar or the enter key, it's the same as that button being clicked. Okay. So you best off, there is another event which a lot of, I've seen a lot of new users use mouse click. It's probably the best idea just to use click because click handles the space bar, the enter key, and the mouse, whereas mouse click only handles just the mouse. So leave it a click, and then you should be right to handle everything. All right, I'm going to steal my message box, and let's go to another event. All right, I hope the click one makes sense. The second one is double click, and it's exactly how it sounds. So this event is going to fire off when I double click on the button. All right, so I start. If I single click, nothing happens. Double click. Uh, nothing happens. <laughs> Not doing a single thing. Well, that sucks. 
Anyway, that was one event. That event actually exists in a lot of other different controls, so it might be useful down the road for you to use that. But here we go. Here's the ones that I wanted to really show off is got focus and the opposite, which is lost focus. So obviously got focus is when the button has got the user's attention or they're interacting with it. So for instance, it should fire off to start with because the first control that has focus is my button. Hello. Okay, it's just going off <laughs> because it's losing and getting focus all the time. <laughs> all right, that's terrible. Let me quickly, if I change the tab index of this guy to zero and this one to one. All right, see how the I just changed that tab index to make sure this button had the focus to begin with. So if I click on this guy, he gets focus and he's continually getting focus because he gets focus and then the message box pops up and the message box has focus. I click OK, this guy gets focus again and then it just sort of creates a good old infinite loop. All right, so let's get rid of the got focus one. That's terrible. Lost focus, here we go. So exactly how it sounds. All right, if the button has got the focus and then it loses it for some reason, then this event will trigger off. Okay, so if I click on the button, Okay, you'll see nothing happens, but if I click on the other button, it's effectively lost its focus. Again, if I click on down here, notice how I went to a completely different other program and it still fired off. Sometimes that can be handy if they're interacting with a control and you know you need to know if the user is interacting with it or not. But anyway, those are the four events. They didn't go quite as planned, unfortunately, but that is our good old friend, the button. You will use him lots, so learn to love him because there's lots of different things you can do with them. All right, in the next video, we're going to have a look at text boxes. We're going to have a look at all the different things. I'm going to throw some tricks in there as well. But for the moment, this is Nick Dingle signing off, and I'm glad to join me for this video. And see you in the next one. Bye.